welcome my dear students i am going to explain you the bazaar of hyderabad is written by sulejni naidu the poem in the bazaar of hyderabad is a brilliant piece of writing by the indian women poet sulejni naidu was born in 1829 and died in 1949 to understand the context for writing this poem you first need to know that sulejni naidu was a major political figures in the indian freedom movement in the first half of the 20th century she was the president of the indian national congress and the first women governor in india and as for the context the poem was written as a part of the swadeshi movement during that freedom movement the indians decided to boycott european merchandise and use the indian products instead Through the poem in the bazaar of Hyderabad, Sarojini Naidu wanted to convey the message that India is rich in tradition and they don't need the foreign products. So she goes on to give a picture of bazaar where traditional Indian products are ruling. The poem is in the form of questions and answers. The poem. is in the form of questions and answers the poet asks the question and the merchant answers them through this technique she make the pictures of the bazaar visible to us the poem contains five stanza the poem contains five stanza of the six lines each it follows a unique rhyme scheme where the second fourth and the six lines in each stanza are rhyming the third and fifth lines are also rhyming the lines stanza is a slight exception dao so the general scheme is a b c b and c b a b c b c b so i'm going to explain you the first stanza the bazaar of hyderabad what do you sell what do you sell oh ye merchants merchants Richly your wares are displayed turbans of crimson and silver tunics of purple brocade mirrors with panels of amber daggers with handles of jade the poem begins with a poet's questions to the merchants about what they are selling she says she says that the goods are displayed nicely to attract the buyers the merchants reply that they are selling crimson and the meaning of the crimson is deep red and silver colored turbans purple brocade tunics mirrored with amber frame and daggers with handles made of jade and the meaning of jade is a green stone and the second stanza is that what do you weigh oh ye vendors saffron and lentil and rice what do you grind oh ye maidens sandalwood hana and spice what do you call oh ye peddlers ye means you oh ye means you you peddlers chessmen and ivory dice the poet then visits the vendors the maidens and uh, the peddlers and the meanings of the peddlers is that salesman she asks the vendors what they are weighing for sale the vendors reply that they are weighing saffron lentil and rice the poet then asks the maidens girls what they are grinding they reply the reply comes that they are grinding sandalwood henna and spices and now the peddlers are asked and now the peddlers are asked what they are calling as their trade cry they say that they are selling chessmen and dice made from ivory for the game of chess so and the next stanza is that what do you make oh ye grind gold smith what do you make oh ye gold smiths wristlet and anklet and ring bells for the feet of blue pigeons frail as a dragon flies wing cradles of gold for dancers scabbard for gold for the king In this stanza the poet now goes up to the goldsmiths and asks them and asks them what they are making they are making wristlet and anklet and ring to adorn us and bells to be tied to the feet of blue pigeons and the bells are as thin and lightweight and 
lightweight as the wings as the wings of a dragonfly they are also making golden cradles for the dancers and golden seats for keeping the king's sword and the next stanza is that what do you cry oh ye fruit man citron palm granite and plum what do you play oh musicians sitar sharangi and drum what do you chant oh musician oh magician spells for eons to come spells for eons to come in this stanza the poet in the the poet in this poem the bazaar of hyderabad now ask the fruit sellers what fruits are they selling the answers that there are citron palm granite and plum now as the poet asks the 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 poet asks the musicians what instrument they are play or they reply that they are playing on sitar sharangi sharangi and drum after that poet goes to the magicians and asks them what they are chanting the reply comes he chanting the spells to bring in eons and the meaning of the eons is that a divine power who would help him perform his magical tricks and the next stanza is that and the next stanza and the last stanza it is what do you weave oh ye flowers girls with with tassels of azure and red crowns for the brow crowns for the brow of a bridegroom chaplets to garlands his bed seats of white blossoms seats of white blossoms new garnered to perfume the sleep to perfume the sleep of the dead in the last stanza of the poem the poet asks the flower girls what they are weaving with the azure and the meaning of the azure is that deep blue and red tassels and red tassels means standard of flowers stand is sorry strands of flowers the flower girls are making garlands for the bride and for the bride and the groom and to adorn their bed for the wedding night they are also making seats of newly brought white flowers for use on the dead on the dead man's grave for fragrance so the poet sarojini naidu represents an indian market to give us a sense of the rich indian heritage the poem was her protest against the european products and an appreciation of our own goods so i hope you haven't got any problem to understand this poem so thank you so much for listening carefully